Hi all. Uh, in this game against uh, Vera Menchik, who unfortunately came last in, in Carlsbad in 1929, but she was the strongest uh, w woman player in the world, I believe, at the time. Um, hence her invitation to this super strong tournament. <laughs> Um, Nimzovic played a kind of overprotection gambit, which uh, reminds me of the mock, the hands mock game, uh, the fictional game. It's the same variation. So instead of how I'd play this gambit, but I have experimented now with also Queen G4. This this also seems to have quite a few points to it, um, as well as overprotecting E5 from G3. The Queen on G3, on a serious note, does support H4 and H5 which would increase overprotection indirectly if black expects the knight to attack e5. So it's got a point to it, queen g4. It's an interesting gambit against the French defence, and I've, I've won quite a few games very recently uh, trying this as an experiment. So c takes d4, so Nimzo starts overprotecting the e5 point. And, you know, this is serious stuff. This is actually a way of winning games, overprotection, uh, believe it or not. Um, so... If, if you've read overprotection is insignificant, you know, maybe this, this could start influencing your views on it. So Queen A5 check seems a bit pointless from, from Vera. Um, I can't really say what she had in mind. Was it to give up the, the bishop after bishop B4 and bishop D2? Anyway, so Nimzo just plays knight BD2. Okay, knight G E7. And so Nimzo just castles uh, on the king side. So we see the knight g6 move, but as I mentioned, the queen on g4 uh, supports later h4, h5. So undermining black's overprotection of e5, so white strengthening the grip on that e5 pawn. It's also, the queen's also obviously making it very uncomfortable for black to try and castle kingside later, uh, being faced with this like frontal pressure on the g pawn. So um, bishop e7, now we see h4. Black's just got a very uncomfortable game, although being a pawn up, uh, she's getting strategically crushed in my view, to be honest, and she's getting driven back now after bishop f8, h5. Uh, so how many pieces are now on e5? Well, there's two at the moment, but the queen can come to g3, and g6 has been deprived. So knight b3, as if white could, if, if he wants, just try and regain the pawn. Actually, he does regain the pawn now, so it's not even a gambit. It's just a very good position for white, with black seemingly uh, underdeveloped. Immediate threat of knight b5 to d6. So um, Vera takes on d4. We see a recapture on d4. Okay, bishop d7 against that knight b5 threat. Now bishop g5. There's uncomfortable pressure being exerted uh, tactically, if nothing else, on black's position here after bishop g5. Difficult for black uh, to have any pawn breaks here. It's just, just miserable with the black pieces, actually. And uh, now, after g6, not only dark square weaknesses, but also the queen and the c-fold. White thinks he can even open up the position by playing potentially for c4. So he plays rook a c1. There's knight f5. So the only developed pieces is now um, able to be traded off if Nimzo wants. But... Um, he first plays bishop f6, forcing the uncomfortable rook g8. And now he takes on f5. So black can't recapture with the g-pawn unless she unless wants to lose the rook. So e takes f5, weakening d5, making e6 now a potential threat very soon. So queen e2. e6 is a direct threat in this position probably now, actually. Just, just with that black king stuck in the centre, not able to castle queenside. So queen b6 protects against e6, and also attacks the knight. Okay. In fact, queen takes d4 and e6 wouldn't work, because queen takes f6, I believe. So c c3 is played by Nimzo. Then we see bishop c5. But now, uh, white just tries to break open um, that c file using another uh, pawn sack. So b4, offering the d4 pawn. Let, let's see what would have happened, actually. Um, Vera takes on d4, but doesn't play queen takes d4. Now, is it because of the, the obvious, like, e6? Because then bishop, queen f6, maybe e takes d7. Or is there something even more crushing here? Let's have a quick look at this position with the help of an engine. Queen takes d4. I guess it's e6. Yes, e6. Massive advantage apparently. Queen takes f6, e takes d7. So here, 
if king takes d7 oh there's queen b5 check and um this this is terrible so um if king d8 this this is getting all over um with a mating two, queen takes d5, mating two. All right, so that's to be avoided. <laughs> Allowing e6 like that. Let's, let's turn off this engine. Um, so bishop e6, just to stop that e6 advance. Now rook c5. Okay, offering b4, but at minimum there seems to be rook b5, then taking on b7, then getting access to e7 if if queen takes b4. Uh, so actually, king d7 was played. So the opposite colour bishops favours sometimes the person with the initiative and white has the initiative and concrete pressure and a concrete threat now is, is set up of rook takes d5 just sacking the exchange to further expose uh, Vera's king. So she takes the pawn on b4 and allows this exchange sack to happen but doesn't take it. She just retreats the king to e8. So Nimzo's Nimzo really uh, got the black king stuck in the centre. The rooks are not connected. It's a really miserable position. He just plays rook c1 now, keeping that exchange sacrifice offered, but also building up more threats now with rook c7, Sam rook e7. So Vera takes on, on d7, on d5 rather, queen takes d5, with still the threat of rook c7, for example. So queen b6 maybe guards against rook c7, but now this very, very. <laughs> uh, sharp tactical move queen f3 so queen's coming to that a3 to that diagonal so that justifying this bishop on f6 from from a3 it can also threaten queen a4 check so uh black does seem to be in dire straits uh she takes on h5 but after queen a3 the defense is hopeless here queen e6 to defend e7 to no avail though rook c7 just further in intensifying um, e7 pressure and now Vera resigned so it, it was a uh, it was a kind of vicious example of overprotection and employed uh, with great effect so uh, black really didn't have much of the game not no not many pawn breaks not much counterplay it's an, another example of strategic crush basically um, after h5 getting rid of um, blacks um, con influence over the center basically and uh, white's even regaining the pawn and after this g6 you know th there's already dark square weaknesses to exploit but white opens up the second front you know rook c1 preparing c4 so um there's there's also though the idea now um of just just trying to invade on the seventh rank and, and play for e6 very specific dangers in the position nothing to do with any positional theories um, just, just king safety is a, is a major element of the position, which Nimzovic, you know, he's, he's a dangerous tactician. He doesn't mind giving up material to, to blast open lines to the opponent's king, as this game demonstrates. So rook c1, coming to that lethal 7th rank in the middle game. Forget about endings with rooks on the 7th rank. And now this lovely queen retreat um, spells out how, you know, black's demise. That from a3, the queen's going to be decisive. So the rook on the, the final rook on the seventh invasion, causing black to resign. Um, so this this is a, an overprotection example, which I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.